And I'm here. Is that too loud? No, it should be fine. I don't know why I'm singing. I'm the worst singer in the world. Welcome, welcome back. Do you like this thing? I just made it, made it myself today. It's my first attempt at welding uh, something actually productive. And uh, didn't go well. Broke. But it's here. <laughs> oh no. Hello, Jason. How are you doing? Thank you for thank you for joining me. Thank you for commenting. So you know how it goes if you've seen these before. Um, I talk about a book. Well, I'm looking up there. I'm looking at myself because I've got a monitor up there. So hopefully today's video looks a little bit better. Hopefully it sounds okay. Still seems a little bit loud, but we'll. Um, We'll deal with that. So today's book is Goodbye Things. I keep looking. Today's book is Goodbye Things. Uh, probably didn't help that that's in the way. It's um, on, minimal, on Minimalist Living. Uh, it's by Fumio Sasaki. And um, he's, a, he's a writer in his early 30s. I'll read this off the back. It's usually better than any of the research I could do anywhere else. Um, Lives in a tiny studio in Tokyo with three shirts, four pairs of trousers, four pairs of socks, and not much else. That doesn't genuinely doesn't sound like enough. Um, in this essay, Suzaki explores the philosophy and cultural history of minimalism from Zen Buddhism to Steve Jobs, offering a set of simple rules. Be a borrower, find your uniform, keep photos of things you love. Uh, he shows how we can all lead happier and more meaningful lives. And... Um, that's him there. Seems like a nice chap. I actually, in the research for this, I did watch. Um, I watched some uh, interviews. I think no, I think there's just one interview of of him, um, and he, he just seems like a really regular guy. And I I think that's it's one of those kind of important things when it comes to something that's potentially divisive, like minimalism and getting rid of all your stuff. Now, I like the idea of minimalism. I'm just going to sort of preface this whole video. Sorry, one second. I'm going to preface this whole video by saying that, yes, I do like minimalism. I have used it to great advantage. I've gotten rid of a lot of things that were cluttering up my life. I am not the kind of minimalist like Fumio. I have quite a lot of stuff still. I am more intentional about the things that I own and I'm a bit smarter about the things that I buy and let into my life. And I'm not spiritual at all, so it's not like letting them into my life as some sort of religious act, but it's um, it's definitely something that has been helpful for me. Uh, not... I just don't, I wanted to get that out of the way. I don't really want to preach on about minimalism. I just think this book is, I mean, not only is it kind of a really beautiful book, hopefully you saw the little intro um, thing of it, just, just showing the cover. It's um, not only a beautiful book, but it's beautifully written. It's translated. I th I'm pretty sure it's translated. Let me just rem remind myself. Um Oh yeah, that's it. It doesn't say in it, but I th I'm pretty sure it's translated. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I, maybe I've, I'm getting that wrong. Um, so I've read this, I think I've read this through just twice now. So I read it through properly um, six months ago. Really, really loved it. Wanted to talk about it some more and um, perfect chance, but I wanted to kind of go back through it before talking about it so uh, the last couple of mornings up nice and early and um and like gone through it and uh, and taken some notes where are my notes so this is this is the teething issues i'm talking about sorry guys it's it's a really easy like read you know it's not um it's not a dense book and it's not 
particularly um, the content isn't particularly heavy. One thing that I really, really love about this book, the thing that kind of um, it didn't make me buy it because I think I'd, I think I I got it online, but it's the the fact that it's kind of got these plates at the start that are kind of full color and there's just really beautiful photography in there and it does some case studies and um uh for, well first of all he talks about his his own place uh how it went from something as messy as this to completely empty almost like that um both of the pictures on the opposite page are of my old apartment. I couldn't throw things away. As you can see, my obsessions kept piling up. I lived in this apartment for 10 years, and during that time, it seemed like my life had stopped moving forward. That was when I came across the concept of minimalism, uh, of reducing your belongings to just the minimal essentials. I went from a very m messy maximalism to life as a minimalist. I said goodbye to almost all my things, and to my surprise, I found I had also changed myself in the process he's talking about a fundamental life change in this book he's talking about getting rid of almost everything you own and i don't think that's what most people reading this book are going to take away from it um I, I really i not that i disagree with that i think it's um i think it's admirable if that's you know how you want to be happy but it's definitely not for everyone. I do think we should probably be a bit more considered, though. So, I, I said I'd get the preachy stuff out of the way. Fucking, I'm sorry. Um, so, case studies. He does a couple of case studies. You know, these are kind of... Um, the first one is him. He talks about a, a apartment of a trailblazer. Uh, so, a traveller. Traveller? No, um, like a techie kind of person. These are all people in Japan, as far as I can tell. A uh, minimalist couple living in comfort. Um, you see what I mean? It kind of starts you off like by inspiring you, which is a great way to start a book like this because you kind of go into it like, oh, these things are beautiful. Oh, I really like these. And, um, and you're not just hit by like a wall of information. Uh, to start off with, I really like this. This guy is like minimalist globetrotter, and he's um, yeah, just got all the stuff that is in his backpack uh, for traveling the world. So it's kind of split into three. The first bit is um, looking at what minimalism actually is, what it means to him, where it's come from, where. It can take you, um, basically, why it's a, why it's a good thing, why it's something that you should maybe think about. The second bit is kind of the practical theories on how to get rid of stuff, and um, no, sorry, chapter two. It's in, it's in five chapters. What I'm in about, not three. So, yes, chapter one, um, kind of why. Uh, chapter two, what's the reason you've accumulated stuff in the first place? Chapter three, uh, basic techniques, like practical theory on how to get rid of things that you maybe don't need and how to figure out whether you do need stuff or not. Chapter four, um, the changes that it caused in him. Always one dickhead, isn't there? I don't know if you'd hear that, someone going very loudly past the window. Uh, chapter five, um, more insight into why it made him happy. Uh, so he says he's defined minimalism as reducing our necessary items to a minimum and doing away with excess. So we can focus on the things that are truly important to us. People who live that way are often the ones who consider minimalist. Yeah, okay. And um, that's all before the book's actually started. Um, if there's anything that you would like to know specifically about this book, just uh, hit me up in the comments. Um, 
Jason has already uh, already been commenting a little bit. It'd be great to see some other people. Um, you know, this is a new thing for me. I'm I'm trying to get better at it, and I'm trying to trying to build it up into something that we can, you know, that can be a kind of a bit of a conversation. We can get you guys involved and hopefully like start reading the books and this become more of a book club, a little bit of a digital round table on a square table. Well, it's more of a rectangle. Made this myself though. That's nice, isn't it? Fun. So content, why minimalism? Why did we accumulate so much in the first place? 55 tips to help you say goodbye to your things. Um, 15 more tips for the next stage of your minimalist journey. A lot of, a lot of tips. It's, it's kind of like, it's practical advice, but it's, it's framed in a kind of theoretical way. Should we say, let's go with that. Um, so just going to my notes. So, Information overload is like one of the main things that he starts off by talking about. This kind of idea that our brain is like an outdated piece of hardware. Um, we're getting so much information, so many things coming to us now that weren't in the past that maybe we're not able to cope. Um, and and that's, that's kind of how he starts this off. Um, I think um, I really like this. The person that comes to mind when I think about this type of minimalism is Craig Adams. And if you don't know who Craig Adams is, Craig with a K, search on YouTube. He's he's just like streamlined the videos on his channel. So he's only got like 14 videos, but they're all amazing. And that's like a, a kind of minimalism that I really enjoy. Um, and that's the kind of minimalism that comes to mind when... Uh, when um, I think about this book. Um, minimalism isn't a goal, uh, it's a lifestyle. And um, getting rid of things shouldn't be the thing that defines you in exactly the same way that accumulating things shouldn't be the thing that defines you. And I, I like that idea. I like the fact that he's kind of calling bullshit on this minimalism craze that's like I live with just one washcloth and a blanket that I wear as a robe like that is it, it doesn't help it's not a helpful thing it's not something that other people can live by um, don't let your process become your destination um, that so that uh, that idea like follows on from what I was just saying don't let don't let the search for minimalism just kind of become another thing that stresses you out because that's really not the point either um one thing that he he kind of like gives us a thought experiment is minimalism so because he's he's writing from point of someone who's seen Japan go through some serious natural disasters. He talks about the loss of everything. So not choosing to give everything up, but the loss of everything and how how that affects you, which is a really interesting thing to think about, you know, with people being displaced and, you know, wars and, and things like that and natural disasters, you know, there's so much stuff going on, especially like in America at the moment where people are, you know, between hurricanes and um, and um, like wildfires and things like that, people losing their possessions, not just not just wanting to do with less. Um, you know what what does that you know where does minimalism stand when it comes to that? And what he says is it kind of the idea of having minimalism before that and not losing so many things. One thing that he actually says is um, there's, I think, a, a comic book um, or, or some kind of other author, I can't remember off the top of my head, they um, sort of wrote about this thing where people's possessions, because it was 
um, like an earthquake, their possessions were like becoming dangerous and they, their possessions were actually harming them quite physically and quite literally. So, you know, I think that's a bit of a metaphor, I guess. Um, and, ooh, um have you thought about the fact that your goals, uh, have you thought about the fact that you, the person you are now, present day you, might actually be like serious goals for you 10 years ago? Like think about yourself now. I mean, this kind of isn't minimalism, but it's something that kind of came up from reading this. But would 10 years ago you be like proud and be like, oh my God, like it's amazing that you're doing this stuff and you're like trying to be, you're trying to chase happiness but actually you've already found it in a way that's that's kind of interesting i really like that i like sort of stuff about being happy and i'll get to that a bit more in a bit um so one of the things that prevents us from being happy happy with the things that we own is the fact that we get used to things um and this is something that fast fashion really exploits, exploits it to the max. Uh, so that's actually, I mean, something that I'm becoming a lot more aware of now. Um, Katie, my my girlfriend, my partner, she um, creates fashion um, out of reused, recycled textiles, upcycled um, vintage clothes, things like that. Uh, my friend Natasha also does it, and um, I'm hopefully getting a couple of people on this channel uh, in the future who are going to talk to me about things like fast fashion, and um, I'll I'll try and I'll I'll put some of them down in the description, um, and you can check them out because fast fashion does rely on that, and is kind of like it's not evil, really. I mean. It, it's just not nice at all. Um, uh, this is where, so at the moment, the other thing that I'm reading, I'm rereading Digital Minimalism, and in that, uh, he mentions that boredom comes from not having high quality leisure. And that was just like a little crossover between that book and this book. Um, and this thing about forgetting, or like becoming used to the idea of something. One of the things that our brains like really well programmed to do is well before before I say what it is, think about things like um having a hangover, going through childbirth, and um running a marathon. All things I got that wrong. I wasn't supposed to say having a hangover. I was supposed to say going out and getting really drunk. So I've kind of given it away already. But these are all things, so going out, getting drunk, childbirth, running a marathon, these like three things are things that you would never do twice if pain like stuck around in your brain. But it doesn't, we get used to that and we forget it and we we kind of push it behind us and, and it sort of disappears. Like you try and think about pain, it doesn't come back. Actual pain doesn't come back. Um, which is something that I got from this. I can't remember how it came about in this, but I thought that was a really interesting um, concept, um, which, as I was reading it, made me think about, sorry, made me think about um, a meme or like a, a, a picture that was shared. One of the, um, I can't, um, one of the princesses, like the, that one of the royals um, was like, in the paper because you wore a coat twice and someone was like oh my god turns out you can wear a coat twice i'm gonna save so much money and it's just like yeah you get used to stuff but that is a ridiculous to a ridiculous extent that like the idea of wearing something twice is is terrible um yeah you quickly get bored with things so this is him now talking about how to deal with um with actually getting rid of stuff, you know, come to the come to terms with the fact that you get bored of things. Page sixty-seven. What do you say about it? 
Um, uh, so you, when you buy something, you don't imagine the tenth time wearing it. You imagine the first time wearing it or the first time using it. Um, you know, find joy in the tenth time of wearing a jacket, basically, is what he said. Um, don't let your value and your self-worth be dictated to you by other people who are just judging you on the things that you own. Um, that's, I mean, that should go without saying, really, shouldn't it? But it doesn't. It's difficult. Um, so he talks about having books and DVDs and CDs and whatever collections you've got on show, like having them not as like a source of knowledge and entertainment, but having them as like some sort of physical representation of who you are as a person. And that's kind of not okay. Um, if you're not going to read those books, if you're not going to find, you know, beauty in them, find use in them, then maybe, maybe you should get rid of them. Um, so one of the first bits of advice, the first like thing that he goes into with his tips is just telling you that it's hard work to discard stuff, to get rid of things that you bought or someone gifted to you is a skill. It's something that builds up over time. It gets easier as you do it more, you know, just, just to um, settle you in because it's going to be difficult. Um, just a couple of quick things that I like from this book, from these tips. You gain more than you lose when you get rid of something. So you like gain more time, gain more sort of mental clarity or whatever uh, than you actually do by kind of giving something away. Um, just go for it with minimalism. Uh, minimalism is the first step. It's not, um, you know, it's not something you do after you've kind of settled everything down. Like it is a way to settle everything down. Um, multiples uh, that you own of things are the easiest to discard that's a great way you know if you've if you know as a couple say you've ended up with two copies of something get rid of one like seriously get rid of it um whilst i remember one of the things that i don't like about this book is the fact that he's very much like just throw it away get rid of it as quick as possible I don't like that, you know, find utility and stuff and, and see if other people want it and, and try and bring some value to, to other people with the things that you don't need anymore because they might improve their lives. Um, think about how long it is since you last used something. Um, you know, if you're like not your winter coat, like that's been in the cupboard since last winter because it's a winter coat, but more like you know, the fancy dress watch you've got. Like, if you've not worn that for six months and you've been to, like, some fancy occasions, you're probably not going to wear it. I've got a squash racket that's just ready to go because I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna be using that anytime soon. Uh, is it functional? Do you want it or do you need it? These two, I put these two together, even though he's got them separate. Because is it functional? Yes. Like, but the fact that it's functional probably means that it's either got a use or it hasn't. You know, if it's not functional, it's probably not necessary. If you get me. Um, take photos from, uh, takes photos from a nostalgia sort of perspective. So, um it's kind of what I talked about in my last stream with that Sega book, the Sega Mega Drive book. Um, you can have things in a, in a way that actually doesn't clutter your life and doesn't doesn't tax your your mind in any way. One thing I'll say about that is something that he doesn't address and something I've seen go unaddressed um, quite a few times now is the idea that you can just kind of um, what did I put? Um, I can't remember where I've written that. Basically, um, I don't agree with the fact that digital is like the savior for your photos and things like that. I think if you're going to be taking pictures and like expecting them to like live on, 
you've really got to keep that tidy. You know, there's such thing as digital minimalism. A book by Carl Newport is really good. Hopefully uh, find time to do a live stream on that at some point. What I'm what I'm thinking is like, don't get rid of stuff just to make your house tidier and just like put it in the cloud because then you've, you've that's basically like a digital version of Monica's closet. Like that is just putting shit somewhere else that's just out of sight and it it's going to end badly at some point. Um, one thing that really helped me um, is this idea of um, getting rid of the storage space before you get rid of the things that are in it because that leaves you then not being able to hide um you know hide things away from yourself by organizing them make yourself feel better about the fact that something exists just by like it being tidy so get rid of the storage space and the things will annoy you and you'll get rid of them um ooh, on the note of the squash racket uh it's important to remove the idea of someday so Someday I'll need that squash racket because I'm going to go play squash. I've not played squash in like three years, so probably not going to come up anytime soon. Um, your items aren't worth the money you paid, um, so keeping them isn't going to make um, them like pay for themselves in any way, unless they are functional. This, you know, that's obviously caveated by the fact that if you are using them, you should probably keep them, but. Just because something was expensive when you got it doesn't mean now it's inherently worth that much. That phone that you're keeping as a spare, maybe you should just get rid of it. Um, if you were to lose it, would you buy it again? That's a big one with like minimalists. You know, if if you don't see the value in buying it again, why? bother having it yeah i mean it doesn't always work but it sounds cool um do you remember every gift that you were given and if you don't which you probably don't um don't worry so much about the gifts that people gave you if they're going to fall out with you because you sold like something that they gave you Maybe, you know, maybe reconsider that friendship or maybe just have a word with them. Point them to this video, tell them to read this book. I've got an affiliate link to this book. That'll help me out. If you are interested in reading it, it'd be great if you could buy it through that link. Next week, um, I've got the uh, Checklist Manifesto. That's listed down there if you want to read that along with me beforehand. If you think you can do it in a week, it's only a small book. Hopefully I can. Um, check that one out on there. That's basically my sponsor read because I don't have any sponsors. Um, oh, this is morbid. Um, think about what happens to these items when you're dead. Yeah, no one's going to give a shit about most of the stuff you own. So, I, uh, one idea I'm not so keen on is this idea where he's like, don't stock up on things, they'll just get in your way. And I'm like, okay, I understand not having like a cupboard full of like a hundred toilet rolls, but relying on the fact that the shop's going to have that one thing that you need when you need it, it's probably not that great. I like to have, uh, so things like, you know, I found a soap that I really like and I buy like three at a time, make sure that there's, you know, if I go to the, if I run out and go to the shop to get another one, and it's not there, I'm not going to be left high and dry or um, dirty, I guess, would be the better. Oh, I don't know. Well, these, 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 these fall apart quite quickly. Uh, but be, you just be mindful of it. Like if you're just don't buy stuff because it's on offer. Don't buy stuff just because it's there. If you think you might already have it at home, keep just think about the fact that you probably got that stuff at home. If you have less stuff, you're less likely to end up rebuying extra stuff. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not a Marie Kondo fan, not really anyway. Um, but he does he references her, 
and I, I put that as a negative for this book. Fair one. Um, things aren't actually memories. They're not. They're not memories. You can get rid of them. The memories will stay. Yes, you won't have that trigger all the time, but you know, you you'll hopefully have you'll hopefully have the memories. Uh, you can probably borrow or rent. Um, so this is one thing that I do with like cameras and lenses and like expensive film stuff. And what it does is it helps you separate that sort of um, desire to own it from the thrill of like using it for the first time. So once you've like rented something and played with it, you're like, oh yeah, don't, I don't actually want to own that. It was, it's fine, I just rent it and you save money that way and you don't end up having the upkeep on it and things like that. Um, so a similar thought process, a uh, bit of a jump back to the Zacharias book, the Q and A photography Q and A that I reviewed the other week. Um, he talked in that about the idea of starting from scratch. Like, what would you get? What is the, like getting the minimum things that you actually need? And he's talking about starting a camera business, like starting a photography business. But for you, it could be, you know anything like when when you get a, if you get a new computer do you need to buy every single accessory um or can you maybe get a cheaper computer for now and and kind of work work up to to it sorry i'm using natural light so it's it's getting a bit dark so yeah if you're going to start from scratch what do you actually need and you can kind of look at your whole life in um in in those terms as well. I'm not saying start butt naked, not living anywhere, but you know, sort of, you, you get the idea, you get the idea, I don't know, I feel like I'm losing it now. Oh, 34 minutes is a long time to talk for. Um, admit, admit your mistakes, especially to yourself, buying as rent, mm, that's a bit of a weird one. I'll not go into that. Fewer things does not mean less satisfaction. Uh, having a uniform can be very freeing. So this idea that like people like Steve Jobs um, kind of found this uniform that he wanted to wear every day for the rest of his life, Einstein, and you know people who care about their time supposedly do this, where they just have like the same thing and they they avoid a decision in the morning. It frees up time. You don't have to think about what you're going to wear that day. Uh, originality can um, could kind of prosper when you have less stuff. You can, I don't know, I'm not sure what he's going on about with that one. Um, discard stuff even if it sparks joy. I like this because so much of the stuff that I have in my life, like art and books, are there because I get some sort of joy and satisfaction from them. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have to stay. Uh, if I, 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 my notes are terrible. Uh, having more freedom, um, so benefit of minimalism is you can potentially have more freedom. You can have the ability to travel easier and to move easier and change your lifestyle easier. Um, so being able to focus better, spending less money, care about the environment a little bit more. So minimalism kind of goes hand in hand, um, a lot of the time with environmental consciousness. Uh, at least it has kind of for me, uh, like I said before, with fast fashion and things like that. Um, spending, I was going to spend there. Overall, the thing that I enjoy most about this book I really like that it's inspiring to like actually think about the stuff that you own. Um, so one of the things that I... There you go. That's in the other room. One of the things that happened to me on rereading this book is I actually cho decided to keep something that I was going to get rid of. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen me talking about my C100. Really old camera, but do you know what? It does a lot of stuff that I need it to, and I had it in a box to sell. But because of reading this book, I was really kind of mindful about like what I would replace it with and and um, is it worth the amount that I could get for it. So this book kind of can go both ways. But when I first read it, it did help me 
you know, release my grasp on the 26 recipe books that I had. You know, cookbooks are great, but I wasn't looking at any of them. Now that I've whittled it down to like six, I'm actually using them, actually grabbing them off the shelf because there's not like this sort of decision fatigue. Um, so yeah, this book is great as a inspiration. You're not going to go as far as he goes. If you do, let me know. That would be really interesting. Um, the overall thing about this is it's about contentment and about choosing to be happy instead of trying to become happy. Being happy with what you have at the moment. And it's a really beautiful read. It's a nice book. It's it's not challenging. It's not going to make you angry. It's not going to... I mean, unless you are triggered by minimalism, then I mean, don't watch 38 minutes of a video about a book about minimalism. Yeah, that's that's that book. I recommend it. What did I do? I, did, I used to do like a really like percentage-based... Um, Back when I used to do these reviews on IGTV, I did like a out of 100, so a percentage kind of thing. And I would give this a, it's a solid 82. I'm giving it 82. 82%. High recommend. Anything above like 80 is like, seriously high recommend. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about this book, leave them down in the, the, the comments. I nearly said description then. I'm the only one who can do anything about the description. Next time, it's going to be a book that Matt Diavella mentioned a while back. Um, it's, um, it's linked below anyway. It's the Checklist Manifesto. It's another it's another kind of betterment book. Not self-help, whatever you call it. This has been a long live stream. Um, so much so. Oh my God. No, decline. Sorry, Katie. Um, <laughs> so much so that I've gone, yeah, this is 10 minutes too long. Thank you for watching. If you've watched to the end, there is one person watching. Are you still, hey, well done. Um, these, I'm hoping to get them better. Honestly, a little bit of like chat back from you guys would be amazing. Hopefully shorten these down and improve my notes and stuff like that. I'm really working on these. And um, this is just something I do for fun. And, you know, I like to talk. I like to talk about books and ideas. And if you like to listen to someone talk about ideas, maybe um, maybe you might consider subscribing. Uh, I, I would really appreciate that. And um, yeah, check out the, the um, Goodbye Things and the Checklist Manifesto, How to Get Things Right. Um, yeah, and um, give this a like, maybe, I don't know. Uh, check out my next video. Check out my last video. Just um, just say hey. Go follow me on Instagram. Don't even go follow me. Just go and say hey. Um, it'd be nice. Right. It's over now. I'll see you next time. I really want I'm just being stupid now.